Hi, how you doing? My name is Kwesi Salman, and I'm going to speak today about the two articles that we had to read uh, for this week. Uh, the Amar Speda article and the Ola Dejo article. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to introduce my wife. Good evening, I'm Sarah. She's going to be helping me with the presentation today. So, basically the articles were about corrective feedback and how we go about that. Uh, I think the thing that best signifies the first article, right? The Amar Speda article was when they said that recasts are defined as corrective feedback as a corrective feedback technique that reformulates the learners immediately preceding uh, an, erroneous, an erroneous utterance while maintaining his or her uh, intended meaning. That gives the learner a chance to uh, maintain their effective filter. Uh, not maintain, excuse me, it gives us a chance to break through the effective, effective filter and not have the student feel uh, uneasy or, you know, like they're being attacked or ambushed. Uh, I, be, I looked at one of my classmates' video and I think he did a great job. He had his daughter help him, help him out and she did a great point of shutting down once he became too aggressive. Uh, and that that's the whole thing. Uh, the Amar Spade article basically is saying that if we do corrective feedback the right way and we're using recasts, it will allow the learners to maintain their effective filter. Uh, also, it spoke about prompts, uh, and I'll try to stick in an example of prompts, but really I'm going to do recast uh, when we go into it. Uh, also, something else that came up that was, uh, of course, yeah, so the example that they used in the article was the boy has uh, three toy, right? Signifying toy. Three is plural, but he had, but they're saying toy instead of toys. Uh, the second article, I think, what signifies that was it was of course it was about error correction, and it says of course error correction is desirable in order to enhance both fluency and accuracy. I think that was the quote that would be taken from the article that kind of hits what the article is about. That students want to be corrected. Uh, they don't care how they're corrected. I think if you looked at it uh, from the data that they, they posted, it showed that they were willing to always be corrected. I would even argue that it goes against some of the teachings that we have talked about as far as, you know, correcting students. Do you correct them or do you just uh, continue teaching and how do you correct them? Right, so it's kind of two articles that kind of go back and forth. It's kind of juxtapo juxtaposing slightly the way you look at it and the way you look at making corrections. Uh, grammar is less importance of a focus. Is also another key point from the uh, second article, the Oladejo article, that grammar is, it's not really about grammar, right? It's really about communicative errors and, and uh, making sure that the student has functional language that's leading them to fluency. Uh, so in that regard, both articles are coming together, even though at some points they're separating. So uh, we're going to do an example of recast. I want to create room for you. Uh, our example of recast is, if you might begin. Sure. <laughs> She recommended me that I take a few days off from work. She recommended to me that I take a few days off of work. That's good, Sarah. She recommended to me that I take a few days off of work. I tried to explain him the problem, but he had difficulty understanding me. I tried to explain the problem to him, but he had difficulty understanding me. I tried to explain to him, but he had difficulty understanding me. There, I'm not aggressively correcting Sarah. I'm just pointing out to her by recasting, by repeating what she said, but changing and correcting uh, the points that she may have gotten wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do some uh, a quick prompt now. If you might read the uh, oh, excuse me. If you might need read the uh, next one. I don't know why you didn't go. If I were you, I should have gone. I don't know why you didn't go. If I were, were you, you, I would, would have gone. Yes, 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 that's correct, Sarah. If I were you, I would have gone. And I think we had a great example of uh, these techniques 
uh, in some of the videos that we've watched and uh, watched how people have interacted in the classroom. Kwesi Solomon and Sarah Kazala. Thanks, guys.